Okay, so this is uh, this is a new video for uh, for us for design of steel structure using AI SC, and we are going to talk about tension members. Still, we are talking about tension members as we have started before, and this is going to be part three. And the contents for today lecture is going to be related to the effective area. If you remember in the previous videos already I have mentioned that we have we need to uh, uh, like calculate the effective area for the tension member and we mentioned that we are going to dedicate a time for it or a lecture for it. So today we are going to talk about the effective area and after that we are going to talk about the shear lag. What is this? Or what is the meaning of shear lag, what is this phenomenon is all about. And then we're going to talk about how to counter or how we can take into consideration this shear lag by using uh, the reduction factor and in order to get the fictive area according to ASC, AISC. And then we are going to end up with example. Okay. So now let's talk about the fictive area. <clears throat> so regarding the effective area, we, when all elements of cross-section are uh, not connected, uh, like only one leg of angle is bolted to a gusset plate, shear lag occurs. The meaning is whenever that we have an angle and it is connected to a gusset plate, for example here, Okay, with bolt, bolted connection, for example. Okay, so in this case, we are going to find that the part of this angle, which is this leg, going to carry the loads higher than this free leg, because it is already connected here. So if we are having force applied on this. Uh, angle then this leg which is the connected leg is going to receive more loads than the free one okay so <clears throat> this is going to be what we call it the shear leg and I'm going to talk about it after maybe one or two slides so anyway the connected element becomes overloaded and the unconnected part is not fully stressed. So we're going to find that the unconnected part is not going to be fully stressed. Okay? How this shear and how this shear leg is going to be uh, developed, I'm going to explain. But now we need to understand that our section is not fully utilized. It's not fully utilized. One part is overloaded and the other part is partially loaded. This can be accounted for by using a reduced or effective net area. So in this case, we are going to overcome this problem by using a reduction factor. So we're going to say, in case of bolted connections, effective net area. Now we are using this term, okay, and we understand it, that effective net area, it's not only the net area that is the subtraction of the whole area, from the gross area, but we need to reduce it further. So we are going to use this reduction factor, which is the uppercase U. So A effective equals to AN, which is the net area, times U. Okay, this is, you can find it in EIC or ASIC equation D3-1. Okay, this is the chapter that you can find, the section that where you can find it. For welded connections, effective area is going to be area gross times the U. Okay, area gross times U. So, in the bolted, we use net area. Here, we are using the gross area times AU uh, times U. It gives us the effective area. If all elements of the cross section are connected, then our reduction factor is going to be one. There is no reduction in this case. There is no reduction in this case. Okay, so now this is the meaning of effective 
area to take into consideration that there are some part there is uh, one part of the element becomes overloaded and the unconnected part is not fully stressed so this is what we need to take into consideration now let's go to the shear lag okay let's go to the shear lag okay before talking about the shear lag we need to <clears throat> talk about what we call it the joint efficiency whenever that we have an element and this element is going to be connected with gusset plates okay so we are as we said before going to think about what are the failure scenarios for this uh, assembly this assembly is like one tension member as we have explained before and there is two connections which is at the ends of this uh, uh, element or this member this means that we are expecting failure here or here at the ends or maybe we are expecting failure inside the element itself under fracture yes we have mentioned about this we have the excessive deformation or fracture of the element but now when we go to the connection we need to know whether that the connection is going to withstand the stresses that is conveyed or transferred by the element or not so we need to understand or we need to know what is the joint efficiency that we've got so the several factor of the several factors influencing the performance of tension member the manner in which it connected is the most important so whenever that you design your member remember will that the connection is one of the most important part that you need to take care of the connection almost always weakens the member so this is the way here that we are expressing it almost so we need whenever we design to take extra care of the connection because it is weakening the member and the measure of its influence is called the joint efficiency so we are going to call it joint efficiency so this joint efficiency okay is uh, depending on different factors one of them is the ductility of the material itself whether that the type of the steel that we are using it is high strength or ductile uh, steel or what is the type of the material that we are using then the fastener spacing if we are going to use fasteners then we need to know what is the spacing between these fasteners or between the bolts okay it is going to make difference as well stress concentration at holes so if we have the hole of the bolt we need to know what is the stress concentration at the at the hole okay so we need to know about this if the stress concentration is high then we are expecting that the joint is going to have low efficiency fabrication procedures what is the fabrication of this connection how it was fabricated and the last and the most important a phenomenon called or known as shear lag shear lag which is we are going to talk about it in the next slide so all of them they are contributing to reducing the effectiveness of the member but shear lag is the most important shear lag is going to be the most important one okay now <clears throat> so let's understand more about this shear this shear leg when a tensile load is applied eccentrically to a Y plate okay so this is as you can see here this is there is a Y plate and the load is applied eccentrically to a Y plate whether this Y plate is like we are considering it as the angle but it's folded so this is the plate and we fold it for example like this so it becomes the angle okay so whenever that there is stress is going to be developed in one part of this plate we call it this is the meaning of eccentrically to Y plate the stress distribution across the width of the plate is non-uniform okay it is non-uniform as you can see from here the stress this is the stress lagging behind we are this is the stresses 
uh, along the width of the plate, which is the angle I mean here. Okay, so we're going to find, for example, if we are having like weld, which is the connection or the connecting element between this plate and the angle, which is this line here and the other line and the other side, then you're going to find high stresses here, high stresses here, right? However, in the middle, there is lower stresses. And also in the free leg, which is not connected, we are going to find that higher stress here and almost very low stresses here. Whenever we see this distribution here, we call this shear lag, means that the shear is lagging, lagging behind the uh, uh, lagging. This mechanism by which stress, stress gets transmitted from the location of the applied load to sections distant from the load is by shear stresses acting in the plane of the plate. So here, the meaning of this, let me show the next slide. This is actually what, what we can find here. So this is the connection that we have. And whenever there is the loading in this direction, okay, we're going to find that this part of the angle, okay, this link, is going to work <clears throat> with full capacity, for example. However, this part, which is this wedge here, okay, we call it this this which is not stressed, as you can see, okay, when that is like connected to the uh, f uh, to the gusset plate, okay. However, here in this leg, connected here, it is having a uniform stress, okay. If this is the case of bolts, but if we are having the case, the previous case of weld, even in the welded part, you are going to find we have one line here, another line here. So the stress is not going to be uniform, as you can see, okay? So we say that the mechanism by which stress gets transmitted from the location of the applied load, this is the location of the applied load, for example, okay? Two sections distant from the load, which is this sections, okay? This part, I mean, here, for example, okay? Um, sections distant from the, the load is by shear stresses acting in the plane of the plate. This means that the two parts, the two parts here, the shear here is going to be transmitted through shear, okay? Shear across the length of the element. You can sign This is the one here. Look here. This is like shear. Shear is going to be uh, used as the means for transform, transform or transmitting the loads from the highly stressed part to this part. Okay, so this is what we call here. This is the going to be the stress distribution along this along this free uh, free link, and here this is the stresses that is going to be developed in our connected link. Okay. The fact that the stress is lower, the further the location is from the applied load means that the shear transfer lags or insufficient. This is the point where that we call this phenomenon to be shear lag. So the shear is lagging behind, is lagging, okay? Or is insufficient, and, sorry, inefficient. Thus, the non-uniformity of stress in wide plates or plate elements of rolled section, or talking about rolled sections, when a tensile load is applied non-uniformly is referred to as shear lag. Okay? Understand it now? Because the shear is lagging behind and non-uniform, and one part of the element of the free leg or not connected leg is not loaded. Okay. Okay, now let's go to the next part, which is how we are going to take into consideration the reduction factor related to the uh, calculation of the effective area. So we're going to talk about the reduction factor U in detail according to AISC. Okay. Now, reduction factor U, the rules for determining U fall into five categories. It is falling into five categories. 
So we have, this is according to AISC as we said. So first of all, a general category for any type of tension member except plates and round HSS with length 1.3 larger than or equal to 1.3D. Okay, we're going to see this figure. So first, we have like five categories. The first one is general category for any type of tension member except for two cases here. We have plates and we have HSS with this is the length. What is the meaning of length? It's the length of the section as we are going to see for example here okay so this is the meaning of the length here for example if we are having like HSS and it is connected with plate here and the length of this connection is going to be L okay the length of this connection is going to be L. Okay, the second category is going to be plates. The third category is going to be all structure sections, HSS, with L larger than or equal to 1.3D, which is D as means that the diameter of this HSS, we're talking about round one. And number four, alternative values for single angles. We're talking about single angles here. There is some alternative values because already they are falling into this category, remember, right? So angles already in the first category, but we say that this is an alternative values for angles in particular. And number five is going to be alternative values for wide flange, miscellaneous, standard, and HB shapes and HP shapes. Okay, now let's go and see what is the first one or the first category that we are having. For any type of tension member except plates and round HSS with L larger than 1.3D, we can use this, which is, this is what we call it equation 3.1, and this is the general equation, the general equation. This general equation is telling us u is going to be 1 minus x bar over L, where this x bar is the distance from the centroid of connected area to the plane of the connection. Let's go here and see this. For talking about angle, so where is the connecting or the connection or the plane of connection? It's here, okay, right? And where is the centroid here of this angle? It is here, this centroid, right? So this is what we call it x bar, x bar. This is if we're talking about angles here, for example. If we're going to talk about plates connected to uh, like I section here, this is x bar, okay, this distance. If we're talking about connection between plate and I sections here, this is the plane of connection. And here, this is going to be our x bar. I'm going to talk about, about this because we have like two centroids here. Okay, it is in the like upper and lower of the neutral axis. So our x bar is going to be measured from the nearest connecting or the plane of connection to the nearest centroid of the upper half of this component. Okay, similar way in channels, back to back channels, you are going to see that x bar is measuring the distance from. Uh, both left and right as we can see here okay for round shapes as you can see for round shapes if we have like this uh, d then x bar is going to be equal to d over pi d over pi okay so this is the meaning of x bar okay and l it is the length of the connection the direction of floating so the distance or the definition of x bar was formulated in 1963. If a member has two symmetrically located planes of connection, x bar is measured from the centroid of the nearest one half of the area. As we were talking about, we have something like this, and we have the connection here, connection plane here and here, for example. So we are having, this is the first centroid of the upper half, and here this is the distance that we are talking about. 
similarly here okay so this is the distance that we are talking about okay from the centroid as we said okay the length L in equation 3.1 this L here is the length of the connection in the direction of loading so we are talking about the direction of loading itself as shown in the figure okay so here this is <clears throat> the length of different types here so if we have a bolted connection as you can see here so we are going to have the length of the connection to be from the center of this fastener to the center of this fastener okay this is l take care of talking about the center from here okay if we have like something staggered like this in this case we are going to take from the extremes okay the lines or the cent centers of the extreme fasteners this is in case of bolted connection if we're talking about welded connection then if we have like longitudinal and transverse loading this means that all of them they are contributing right for carrying or transmitting the loads from the element to the connected part but actually whenever we are considering the length of the connection we are considering only the length of the longitudinal okay longitudinal uh, weld which is this one yes in the load direction we do not yes consider this one However, if we have this load direction and we have two legs, each one is different or they are not equal, then we're going to take the longest one. Okay, so this is the definition of L in different cases. Okay, now we have covered uh, this and you are going to find in the, in the commentary of AISC specification further uh, Elisa traits X bar and L. So are going to find more shapes and more cross sections. You can find uh, more details about X bar and L. But at the end, we are going to use this equation. And we say this is the most accurate one. Okay. Now let's go to the next part, which is plates. For plates, in general, U equal to one for plates since the cross section has only one element because we have only one element right so commonly we are going to have u equal to one and it is connected there are two special cases for welded plates if we have welded plates we have two different cases the first one connected with longitudinal welds on each side and no transverse weld so there is no transverse weld mean that we are having like welds here and welds here for example okay so I'm going to see this figure which is going to be something like this so we have this is the load and this is the weld here and the weld here as well okay and this is the width that we have so in this case if our length of the connection is larger than 2 W in this case we are going to have u equal to 1 okay u is going to be equal to 1 the width of the plate itself is w and in this case we're going to have u equal to 1 if the length is between 1.5 w and 2 w or the width then u is 0.87 and then if it's between w and 1.5 W, then we're going to find it u equal to 0.75, right? Yes, let me ask you why it is decreasing. Why not all of them, they are the same? And why we are expecting or finding that it is decreasing here? The connection and length decrease. So if the direction he so if we say that we are talking here about the length, right? Because the length is the criterion. If L is large, then U is going to be 1. If L is going to be small, then we're going to go into the decrement or we're going to decrease. So the point is what here? That if we increase the length 
okay, of the connection. This is going to be L. We are not expecting, we are not expecting to find a shear lag that is going to be there. For example, if this is the case, we're going to find that maybe like average stress is going to be something like this. It is going to be the same. But if it's only small, for example, maybe we are going to find that shear like concentration, high concentration is going to be here. So there is like not all the cross section is utilized then we can say that it is effective area is going to be less by using by using uh, u equal to 0.87 or 0.75 because it is lower values okay okay so now this is the rational behind why we are using these values okay. connected with transverse welds only u is going to be 1 and an area of connected element figure 310 illustrates difference between transverse and longitudinal connection by transverse welds are uncommon that's right so here actually we have a connection here as you can see this is like longitudinal and this is transverse uncommonly we cannot find like uh, only transverse welding it's not common in general okay okay let me ask you also here why u is equal to 1 here what is the reason for this? We said that here, u equal to 1 with transverse wilt. So, why? Yes, we can say that there is no shear lag is going to be developed here because, because the whole section or the whole section of this uh, leg or this flange, for example, if we're talking about T-section, for example, here, this transverse loading is responsible for distributing the stresses equally. Okay? So this means that we're not expecting a kind of like shear lag or something like this in this case or it is going to be less. So this is maybe one of the reasons for using U equal to one in case of uh, with transverse loading. Okay. So now we have like two things to keep in our mind. The length matters. The longer the length, then the effective area is going to be not reduced. U might be taken as one. Okay. And if the transverse will is there, then it guarantees uh, u equal to 1. Okay? Okay. Now let's go to the next, which is related to round HSS with L larger than 1.3 D. Okay? Which is this, this figure. So here they said that u equal to 1. u equal to 1. If we have the length here and D, uh, provided that L is larger than 1.3 D, U is going to be 1. If L is between D and 1.3 D, it seems to be based on experiments, so we are going to have U going to follow the equation 3.1. Do you remember? So it is going to be like the general uh, one. 1 minus X bar over L, and this X bar in this case is going to be D over pi. It seems that for HSS, if we have the length of the connection is larger than 1.3D, we are going to have this uniform distribution, okay? So we are going to have it. Okay. There is an alternative to equation 3.1 for single angle. Remember it well? Okay, for single angle, we are having like alternatives, okay, for this equation, which is equation 3.1, okay? The following values may be used in lieu of equation 3.1. This is like uh, a simple way for using or for determining u for, for angles because we use it commonly so maybe we can look to the number of fasteners. So for four or more 
fasteners and the direction flowing u is going to be 0.8 however that we have two or three fasteners in the direction of loading u is going to be 0.6 this is like easy way especially in the preliminary pre preliminary preliminary design stage we need to know what is u okay so we can use them uh, directly but the most accurate is 3.1 let me ask you again if you're going to be confused in the exam for example and you cannot remember that is for four or more it will be 0.8 and for two or three it is going to be 0.6 why it is like this why not the opposite Yes. So, because, like, um, the condition, like, uh, four or more are more condition, so, um, we have less shear lag? Yes, less shear lag, yes. So, the more, yes, because in, in the four or more, we are expecting maybe the length of the connection is going to be there, we are expecting more uniform distribution, okay? Not perfect, but more. So, this is why we use 0.8. But if it's two or three, we're expecting it to be less. Understand? Okay? Make this rational to be very clear in your mind. Do not take numbers as it is. Okay? Think about them. Okay. Now we have other alternative equations for different types and shapes. Y flanges, miscellaneous, standard shape, HP or T is cut from these shapes. We are having like alternatives. Okay, to equation 3.1. If the following conditions are satisfied, the corresponding values may be used in lieu of equation 3.1. Connecting through the flange, connecting through the flange with three or more fasteners in the direction of loading with a width at least two-thirds of the depth, U is going to be 0.9. Another case, which is connecting through a flange with three or more fasteners in the direction of loading with width less than here at least here less than two thirds of the depth then u is going to be 0.85 or decreasing here okay so it seems that if the width is large enough then we're going to expect u to be larger connecting through the web we're talking about web here here it was flange flange and here we're going to talk about web with four or more fasteners in the direction of loading u is going to be 0.7 so the figure 11 or 3.11 illustrates alternatives values of u for various connections okay here these are the various connections so if we are going to have three fasteners this is we're talking about single angle u is 0.6 okay if it's four then u is going to be 0.8 right so the length is higher here if we have b flange over D, which is the width of the flange over depth of the section is smaller than two-thirds, then U is 0.85. But if it's larger than two-thirds, then it is going to be 0.9. And here for the um, parent shape, which is if we have T shape, for example, this is like T shapes, this is wide flange T, okay, right? Or I'm not sure, no, no, this is wide flange 15. Yeah, this is white flange here, talking about white flange here, it was angle, and this is, this is a white flange or T from a white flange, I think. So in this case, uh, for the parent shape, which is mean the cut of the white flange, if we have B flange over D larger than two thirds, then we're going to take 0.9. In this case, for white flange, it is going to be uh, in this arrangement, which is more than four fasteners here, so yes, u is going to be 0.7, okay? Or six, as we can see here, the six fasteners. Let me check something here. So AISC D3.3, this is the chapter, and the section mandates that for shapes such as angle, double angles, and and wide flange T sections shapes, the value of U should not be less than 0.6. Okay, so you can take it as lower limit for, for you.
Okay, let's have an example and wrap up this board. Let's have an example and wrap up this board. So figure 3.4, which we example, sorry, 3.4, determine the effective net area of the tension member shown in this figure, as you can see here. We have a, an angle, 6 by 6 uh, by 1 half inch. The distance between the fasteners, like 3 inches and 3 inches, or the uh, diameter of the bolts is 5 eighths inch, and this is the cross section that we can see. This is the gusset plate, and this is the angle. And we are going to find that for this angle, using the dimension and properties table from the manual, we can obtain this value, which is x bar. Okay, in the manual you are going to find it y bar, but here, according to the equation 3.1, it is going to be x bar for our equation. Okay, so this is going to be like this, and this is the direction of loading that we are having here. This is the direction of loading. Okay. Now, okay. first of all, we need to go to the table. Okay, and the table, as we said before, in the first part, dimension and properties table, you can find this table 1-7, and this is for angles, properties, then go until you reach this like 6 by 6 by and then this is the uh, I'm not sure that it's clear for you or not but anyway this is like 6 by 6 by 1 half okay then you're going to go and read the x bar or y bar it is written here as y bar because we're talking about the angle here if it's equal legs so x bar y bar doesn't matter here so we have like this y bar here we are i'm not sure I'm, I'm getting it right or not i think this is the one 1.67 am i right yes it is 1.67 here uh, remember will as we said many times that you need to have the manual with you so i strongly recommend for you to have the manual on your mobile or laptop for example for quick access okay because during the exam you are going to use it okay? and the problem with the manual is if you are not familiar with it then you're going to lose a great deal of time during the exam and you're going to end up with not finishing your problem because of browsing in the pages of this manual so please be careful of this and try to familiarize yourself with using the manual okay? Now, the solution is that we have AN here. The net area is going to be equal to area gross minus the whole area. So, area gross is going to be obtained from the tables as well. We are going to go back here and you are going to find it somewhere here. This is the area, I guess, this one. Okay, this is the area. Then you can go and find it. Okay, please do it by your hand. And then 5.77 minus half, which is the, like the, uh, we're talking about the width of the angle itself, okay? It is half, half inch. So half times 5 over 8, which is the diameter of the fastener itself, plus tolerance, which is 1 eighth, okay? So the tolerance that we are having, if this is the fastener, for example, then we are adding 5 eighths plus 1 eighth times 2 because we are having two fasteners, right? So we are having two fasteners, here, this one and this one, okay? So this means that we have two fasteners and area net is going to be 5.77 minus the the whole diameter or the whole area which is going to give us almost 5.02 inch square okay as we can see we have only the connection from one leg right so this means that only one element or one leg of the cross section is connected so the net area must be reduced because there is shear lag and so on from the properties table part one of the manual the distance from the centroid to the outside force of the leg for this angle you can find it 1.67 already we have obtained it okay 
and the length of the connection so as strongly when you are watching the video to prepare with you the manual okay prepare with you the manual and look to whatever that I'm doing here the length of the connection is 3 plus 3 this is right we go back here yes we have as we said we're talking about from the center line to the center line so we have 6 here okay and then the reduction factor we're going to use our equation equation 3.1 which is 1 minus x bar over L our x bar is 1.67 L is 6 then we can obtain the reduction factor 0 0.72 0 0.72 this means that 30 almost 30 or 28 percent of the cross section is not going to work for us can you imagine so this is the meaning of 0.72 so in this case area effective is going to be 3.6 not 5.02 okay this is the effective area the alternative value now let's go to the alternative value we have what we have an angle here right so we have an alternative value can be used and if we go back think that it was 0.6 or so right yes let's go for alternative yes for single angles we are talking about single angles right so we can use 0.8 or 0.6 if we have four or more or we have two or three in our case how many fasteners we have two so we can use 0.6 right so in this case yes so because the single angle has three bolts and the direction it is three bolts Yes, because it is like like three lines here, okay? Three lines. But we are talking about, let me check here, let me check something. The following values may be used in lieu of equation 3.14. Four or more fasteners in the direction of floating. We are talking about in the direction of floating. So in the direction of floating, if we have like one, two, three, so one, two, three lines in the direction of floating, then they are three. Okay, so in this case, they are right. In our case, we are having here, we are having three, one, two, three lines. So this means that in the direction of floating, we have three bolts in the direction of floating, you can be taking point six, and based on this, area effective is going to be 5.02, which is an times u.6, which is 3.012 inches. When we compare it with this, okay, the code allows us to take the larger one. The code allows us to take the larger one. So we're going to take this, okay, this one. And also, this one is the most accurate. This one is the most accurate because it comes from the equation 3.1 this like alternative value as I said it is suitable for the preliminary design stage where that you do not know exactly what is the shape that you're going to use if it's only one angle you're sure of it then you can use 0.6 for example uh, based on the number of fasteners so either your value is acceptable he, he means this one or this one and the specification permits the larger one to be used so it is the larger one that you can use here However, the value obtained from equation 3.1, which is this one, okay, is more accurate. The alternative value of U can be useful during preliminary design when actual section properties and connection details are not known. That's right. Okay? Okay, now let's go to the <clears throat> another, another example that is... Uh, based on the welded connection, not bolted connection. If the tension member of uh, previous example is welded, okay, as shown in this figure, okay, it's not bolted now. So determine the effective area. We want to know what is the effective area in this case. So if we're talking about an angle and it is welded from three sides here, okay, then we need to recall that we have longitudinal and transverse longitudinal and transverse okay and we have some limitation on the length 
okay, based also on this width. So, as in the previous example, only part of the cross section is connected, which is this leg, right? It is connected, and a reduced effective area must be used. Then there is a reduced effective area must be must be used. This is based on our equation. This is the accurate one because, as we said, we, we have the alternatives here. So, I, I mean that this is the accurate 3.1, equation 3.1. U equals to 1 minus X bar over L. X bar already we have obtained it before. L here equal to 5.5, which is the length of the longitudinal weld. Okay? So, based on this, we, we found that U equals to 0.69. Then the effective area is going to be the gross area from the table times this 0.69, which means 4.09. This means what? What is the meaning of 0.69 here? If we're going to comp compare between the welded and bolted, which one is better for this case, for our case? The bolted connection or the welded connection? Yes, so this means that if you are looking to having more effective area, then maybe welding would help you to obtain more okay, effective area compared to the well, uh, bolted connection. So here, our U point, almost 0.7 here, however here, it was 0.72, they are very close to one another, okay, very close to one another. I mean, regarding you, only we are having some like other calculation because of the length here, it was six inches actually, right? However, here the length was five and a half inches. But in general, it seems that welding, welding is providing for us a higher, higher effective area. Okay, this is for the first one. Do you have any questions? The first lecture, do you have any questions? Yes, please. Yes. Yes. So you mean here, if L is larger than two times the width, then we are going to use U as one. But we are talking about plates. Oh, okay. so yes, yeah, not angles. Okay. 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 So do you have any questions? Okay. So I think that we can like stop here and we can upload this one.